Welcome to My Hammers 11. Uh, and today's guest, you probably might not, no disrespect, Leon, we probably don't know his face, but you may well have heard him um, as he was one of the um, match day DJs at Upton Park for the last couple of seasons, spinning his tunes on top of the scoreboard. Awesome, awesome view he had, to be honest. Um, so today's guest is DJ Leon. How are you, DJ? How are you, how you doing, Ross? Yeah, it's, it's been a long time since uh, me and you got time. together and been a long time. spun the tunes. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> How's things? Keeping well in a in a in a in a strange lockdown world we live in. Yeah, we yeah, just get through it, mate. Just exactly. uh, take day by day. Anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about fun. No, we're going to talk about West yep. Ham and reminisce. So, um, well, I don't know if that's fun, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. We're reminiscing a better time, a better time, yeah. Leon. So the idea is we uh, we find out about people's Hammers Eleven. So yep. it's we're interviewing lots of different people all over the world and different ages to find out who they who they adored or who they hated. You know that type of thing. Yep. So there's lots of good stories coming out. What we do with everyone, every guest, is we sort of prove their West Ham credentials slightly by asking a couple of questions. The first one is, what is your earliest West Ham memory? First game I went to was in 92. <clears throat> we played Derby. I uh, sat in the East Stand. We drew 1-1. Trevor Morley scored. And then after that, my dad got me a season ticket. And I went every other... I went every game. Um, yeah. I sh- I'll show you, actually. I'll tweet you. I've got pictures of me in the whole Hammers news... Um, when we got promoted against Cambridge, um, we was in the Denmark Arms. Yeah, the Denmark Arms. And Martin Allen and Clive Allen come in and put me on their shoulders and we sang bubbles to the oh, whole brilliant. pub. We'll, we'll, we'll whack that um, up when we we'll we'll <coughs> that up so you yeah. can see it. That's a great early, that's a great memory. I was actually, I was the same. I was 92, 93. That was my first, uh, that was my first, um, my first game, which was, I think it was Oxford United. Um, and so that's your earliest. What would be your greatest memory? It doesn't have to be a game. It could be meeting a player or it could be bumping into a West Ham fan in Australia or whatever, you know, that type of thing. Uh, I've got two, Russ, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, the first one comes, um, we didn't win the game, but to, to be there and, and soak it in was the cup final in 06. Yeah. And we didn't lose, uh, didn't win, but it was just unreal go. It's something yeah. that I've always wanted to see um, West Ham do and get in the cup final. Yeah. And the second one is, uh, unfortunate, um, unfortunate, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice that it's happened through my life, but I've got to know a few players. And growing up, Steve Jones was a very, very close family friend. Mm. And on the Friday night, we was playing Wrexham. <clears throat> I don't know if you remember the old uh, snow game. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and Steve rang my dad, very good friends with my dad. Uh, Steve used to, we, my, my family business used to own a fish shop in Basildon. And Steve used to come down every Christmas and give us, uh, me and my brother signed everything, literally everything. No. And uh, this, this game, Wrexham, he rang us up and said that he was starting the game and his two tickets just cut, just turn up at Wrexham, but he didn't tell us. And, and this was at half 12 at night. We didn't have a clue, Russ, what was going on. And we turned up at a uh, fleet station, no, rugby station, yeah. um, service stations. And <clears throat> we got, a, we looked on the TV and it was snowing everywhere. And we was like, what's going on? And Steve rang my dad. He was the only one that had a mobile. Uh, my dad rang him in the service. And when, when you turn up, there's blue lines and it's full of snow. And we were just laughing with him. And we turned up and we did. And it was uh, it was one of them surreal moments. And Hugo Porfirio, I met him after the game, said he'd never, ever seen snow before. No, he'd never seen snow. It was a famous <laughs> never quote, seen snow. It? It and, uh, and, uh, and back then, it was just before we signed Hearts and the Kitson. We had yeah. no strikers. We had no, we had no one. Um, we had Mark Newell. I don't know if you remember him. Mark, yeah, Mark Newell was on yeah. low. He was on loan at the time. And Jonesy got in front of him. Um, he played a couple of games. He played the that game and then he played the following game. But yeah, Jones, he's been a, a close family friend. I talk to him a lot now. And uh, uh, another West Ham ex-player that I'm very close to, I just DJed his wedding, was Bertie Braley through the year yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have uh, a couple of... Uh, and working at West Ham, I got to know a few of the, yeah, it's the nice, players. And, it? uh, it's, it's nice. And uh, still talk to them these days and, nice. the owner, and the owners and stuff. So yeah, it's nice. Lovely. That's good. That's good. I like that. That's nice. As you said, the great thing about this is we're hearing lots of different stories from different people in terms of, you know, uh, I was talking to uh, sort of Robert Banks today and he was talking about, um, uh, you just know, stop you there, Rob, uh, Russ, that, that guy 
yeah. give him a shout out for putting all the season videos exactly on yeah yeah I've been absolutely banging it. Yeah. <laughs> i have not stopped watching yeah. it I, do you know what ross i've gone back and i've looked at players completely differently how i have now do you know what so true really yeah it's like the netflix of west ham it's brilliant now i was talking to Rob yeah. about that and yeah every, every opportunity i was on the stop hammer time the other day and and we name check Robert all the time because it's yeah. brilliant. It's brilliant. We've done Tiger King, so now we've got a complete mm. Yeah. Right, okay, let's crack on with your your eleven, Leon. As I said, it has to be four four two. Um it has Ooh. to be it's no fancy damn formations. I know you're a football coach manager, so it's another yeah. <laughs> four four two. Um I it has to be players that you've seen being alive to play with uh yeah so, yeah so it couldn't you know i can't put in bobby moore neither can you um but we could put in titi kamara for example um and the last one is it's your 11 so you can pick whoever you want it doesn't have to be the best players yep. it could be people you might want to put jonah in or you know it's up to you who you want to put in it's yep. that's the great yep. thing so so who are we going to go with in, so what are we going to do leon are we going to do your best or is there a theme is there yeah a... i'm going to go with the best 11 that i personally think Lovely. and who i grew up loving some of them that, um, yeah, some of them that people might not even remember, but I, I grew love up it. loving. Love it. Okay. So, yeah. Who's between the sticks then for the Leon 11? So, this is a uh, this is a hard one, Russ, because I grew up loving Ludo. Yeah. But I, I used to love Rob Green as well. Uh, consistent, but I've got to go with Ludo. Um, Ludo. I think, I think everyone's going with Ludo, to be fair. Um, people of a certain age maybe people of slightly older yeah. age younger age that's the great thing everyone you've got yeah. this sort of generational thing um, but Ludo yeah no, I like yeah but so I, with Ludo for his game against Man United stand yeah. out and yeah. um, another one as well would have been Jimmy Walker as well Jimmy Walker was an outstanding keeper um, yeah, he was, so yeah. yeah but you've done me a bit here 4 4 so I was going to go 3 5 two just to get some players in so, but you, but you so can, we, you're, you're free to <laughs> adapt the yeah. formation to fit the players so you know yeah. it's like you can you, as long as as long as it's sort of not too tenuous as long as, as, yeah. long as to can you centre back I'll allow that right okay so we'll put Ludo in goal who are we going to go for left back then so left back there's only one mate uh, it's Wayne Quinn your face <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Uh, no, I know Wayne Quinn. Um, I think I've told you this story. I was a manager of Nuki and yeah. Wayne come and play for us. Um, and we leave it there with that one. Um, okay. So, but yeah, Julian Dix, 100%. Yeah. D- Dixie, 100%. I grew up Dixie. Uh, we just said about the YouTube channels and uh, there's one season, I think it was with the, when we had Dimitriscu, Radichoyu. When you look through the videos, you see me running on a pitch every time Dixie has a penalty. And I run up to Dixie every time there's a penalty. You, you, you got to watch it now. Yeah, I run up. Yeah, right. You can see me running on the pitch every time against Southampton when we uh, won two one at the beginning of the season. You just see me running on the pitch and cuddling Julian Dixon and running back into the Bobby Moore stand. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't get away with that now. No. Um, so yeah, Dixie and um, the little thing with Dixie, um, I DJ'd uh, before I got the job, um, a charity event for John Joe at Upton Park. Yeah, and I took my dad with me and all of a sudden Dixie come up to me and he knew my name. He knew everything about me. Um, and my dad was starstruck. was like, his hero knew his son. It was like, yeah, it was just yeah. one of them moments. So yeah, Dixie, nice uh, he's, he's always a top guy as well to speak yeah, to as well. Lovely guy. And obviously you, you know, your, your haircut yeah. similar to Dixie. Yeah. Yeah. In, in his second, his second spill. Okay. So put Dixie on the left. Um, who are we going to go with the right back then? So right back, um, I'm not going to go with a traditional right back because um, he started his West Ham career at right back, then he moved into centre half. Uh, but other right backs I would have gone for would have been Timmy Breaker or Shamil. But I'm yep. going to put Rio, Rio at right back. Yeah. Rio, when he first broke into the team, was actually a wing back for us and he was unreal. But Rio mm. went on to have one of the best careers, you know. And Russ, I think that was our downfall, selling Rio, and everything started falling down around us, mm. um, in, in my personal opinion. Mm. Um, Rio, then Harry, then Frank, the season after with Rhoda, you know, they had a good one, good season. Mm. Then that, we that, got relegated. Season. that season, <clears throat> we should have done something, wasn't it, that season? Um, oh, yeah. When definitely. we finished fifth, when we finished fifth, um, we should have carried on, you yeah. know. And back then, we didn't have the money we had now. Um, but... 
Personally, I generally think we would have won the league if we had kept on them with Harry yeah. as well. Yeah, that's a good shout. Yeah. As you yeah. said, and, yeah, it, Rio went on to such a great career and, you know, and he, you know, I don't think, and I've said this on a few of these, that when people, Rio comes up, I don't think England and West Ham, or West Ham and England as a general, has ever had a, a defender of that class since. Do you know what I mean? No, sort of like, and, and you could argue that Declan Bryce could potentially yeah. be that. I do see Declan being a centre back yes. personally. Mm. Um, I do think he's going to drop back into centre half. Um, but you know, there's no one, there's no one like that apart from watching the old videos like of someone like Lampard. What you don't realise what Frank Junior did for us as well, yeah. um, and going forward as well. And another one, what a mistake, absolute mm. huge mistake. Uh, and Rio, I always remember he didn't want to go, but mm. Leeds were. And that sort of money, That's a, um, and it was a time where Leeds were building, weren't it? As well, Leeds yeah, were building. Was, he had the money. It was he had, you know, it's a lot of money, and you know, it's it was it was, it was a it, he was a young lad, and he, it, who knows what would have happened in those sliding doors moments, isn't it? If he did yeah, go to Leeds, yeah, exactly. then what could have been? Yeah. But he did, and uh, and he went on to an amazing career. So we got Rio right back. Who we got as your um, your pillars of your defence, Leon? <laughs> so, so. I'm going to go, I've, done, I've been doing, since you asked me this, so I'm going to go three five two. but I'm having Dixie, Dixie Rio, and uh, my next one at centre-half, then I'm going to play wing-backs. Okay. So, centre-backs was between Stevie Potts, Mark Reaper, or Winston Reid, mm. but I've gone for him because technically, I still to this day, I don't think we've had another better centre-half was Slav and Village. Mm. Slav, um, was unreal as a centre half, really w- was brilliant. Unfortunately, what screwed him over mm. was the move to Everton. Um, you know, I've, uh, back then, getting four and a half million for a defender like that, it, it was scandalous. But he wanted out as soon as he got to Upton Park. Basically, he had one, he had half season with us, and he was unreal. And the season after, he was gone. Um, mm. But it was unreal as a centre back. He brought Rio's game on. Him and Rio. Um, was unreal, and I met, I don't know if you remember this, us, but when um, the season that the season we finished in the Intertoto, yeah. um, we tried to sign Billish back, and he failed a medical, and we bought Iger Stimach instead. Yeah. And he could he could have come back, um, but Slav, you know, and he's come back to be a gaffer, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah no, he's so a lovely bloke. yeah, so. Yeah, Slav's got to be there as my centre half. Um, yeah. With with Rio and Dixie, Dixie okay. played centre. Dixie played centre half, so I'll get away with that a little. I'll give bit. you that one. I give you that one. All yeah. right. Okay. So <laughs> all right. So we'll, we'll we'll change it around for Leon. Yeah. As I said, he's a football manager, so you know, so it's like yeah, mate. Yeah, he likes to do things yeah. different. Okay. So who are we going to go for left wing back then? Oh, so he's not going to play as a wing back. He's going to play more on top, and it's <laughs> okay. some it's someone that. We was lucky enough, Russ, that we was together when he scored that goal against Crystal Palace. Yeah. And a pair of you turned around and went, what the hell have we just seen? And that was Dimi Payet. Yeah. He, he, I have never seen a player since Parlo like that. He, he yeah. was just phenomenal. And we was lucky enough, we had the best season we ever had at Upton Park, we me did. and you. Um, and I don't... Many people don't know our story. You know, I used to do my stuff and come sit with you after. And yeah. we we used to watch what Dimmy done from a view, and then watch it on the TV. And no one ever, we used to sit there and just go, "Wow, yeah. he was just unreal." And that goal against Crystal Palace, um, I was I was at Old Trafford as well. But his best game for me was against Blackburn in the cup. Um, I went that day with uh, Louise Johnson, her brother, her dad. We all went to Blackburn for the day. And uh, I've never seen a player de- destroy a team on his yeah. own. He destroyed them, and they just couldn't get near him. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Dimmy Pyatt is just he might they might be hated, but for me, he was unreal. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, a lot of these players. I mean, you know, you know, a lot of these players after that, you know, you could say, you know, Slav when he left, people didn't like. But it, it's it's in isolation. So that sort of season yeah. and a half that Dimmy played, I think, I, and I agree. You know, I don't think anyone's had so much of an impact so quickly as he had on on a team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Slav got the best out of him. You know, oh, hundred percent. And so it's you know you t- it's it's the man management as well. As well as oh, he, yeah, he, was an enig- yeah. he was an enigma of a player, and as you said, Paolo, you know, Joe, 
you know, Payet, these sort of enigma players seem to always in the, uh, sort of underpin West Ham when they had their best seasons. Yeah. Having that player who's, you might not have seen him for two games, but for two or three games, he will be world-class. And yeah, and, yeah, and Dimi, I think, was probably our last world-class player. A hundred percent, hundred percent. I remember he um, he got injured against Everton, and mm. then he come back for the Liverpool game, and he he was on for literally a minute. And I remember him doing a turn, and then doing this little bit of skill, and he was on the and the whole place erupted. Yeah. And it was just little things like that that just got the fans off their seats again. Exactly. And it just it was just unreal. And he was on the bench, and we were all singing to get him on. And and, yeah. and that song just in the end just drove me mad because you you just hear it everywhere, kids. In the street, you would hear it everywhere. Well, and it's everywhere. One, of those, one of those songs that then got nicked by others as well. And it's like, yeah. that's, that's our song. That's our yeah. song. Um, but yeah, so okay, right. So we put Pi on the left. Okay, who are we going to go on the right wing back then? So right wing back, um, it's, it's an odd one because I had three players, as I said, three players I grew up loving. Yeah. was Matty Holmes, Stuart Slater, and... Um, Stan Lanzaridis yeah right but I'm going to go with him because he played right wing back and he played in the World Cup for England was Trevor Sinclair yeah good shout Sincla- Sinclair was just up and down um, and watching the old videos back how how like he was unreal for West Ham mm. um, like when he first came into the team he, he was playing up front and he scored two goals on his debut. Just he was just unreal. But he played anywhere. You know, Harry said to him, "Go and play on the left. Go on right. A little bit like Antonio, to be yes, fair. Yes, yeah. Go, go, go and play anywhere. And he would. He would. He would. Mm. He would for the club. Um, another one that I wish we kept when we was in that one season in the championship. Mm. Um, if you, to be fair, now Russ, if we had gone down with that team, I do think ninety five percent of that team would have stayed that first yeah. season trying to come up if they, it was this time now um, but at the time you know he had to go yeah and um, I think and I also I think, yeah. with, I think with Trev I think you know uh, with the exception of, of Deck now he was the last I'd say West Ham player who was consistently in the West Ham Greeno maybe yeah. but, but yeah. consistently you know consistently playing well and obviously the whole World Cup he was integral in that, in that 2002 yeah. World Cup yeah. so it's like you know it's it just yeah, he was he was a, he was a class act, and obviously. Um, and the thing is, though, Ross, I know he got in there by default, but he kept his position. Yeah. And he played on the left, you yeah. know, and, and and by at that time as well, Joe Cole was in the squad, mm. and 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 Joe was known as a central midfielder back then before mm. he went to Chelsea and put on the left, but Sinks was kept on the left, um, and he kept players. You know, like Beckham, oh, yeah. it was four four two, and he had played it, Beckham no, on agree. the right, sinks on the left. Um, yeah, great player, absolutely, yeah. and a bargain as well. I think we played a couple of million for him. So. Yeah, and, and yeah. Roland and <sighs> Dowie weren't it or something like that. It was like a. I think, a... yeah, was it Dowie, Rollins, and Ludo? When no, I, I think Ludo went on loan. Or, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. It was an absolute bargain. Um, right, yeah. okay, so we got him on the right wing back. Who are we going to have in your central central three then? Central now. three, um, I think me and you would agree on this. He's the be- he's been the best central midfielder in my eyes that we've had in the last twenty years. Um, he used to do his Jonathan little route. To- no, no, okay, no. Right, <laughs> um, Scotty Parker. Yeah. Uh, Scott Parker was just <laughs> he tried to keep us up on his own. Um, mm. he, he, that season. It, the, to be fair, Russ, there's only been one player I've seen who dominated a game on their own, and that was David Beckham against Greece. Mm. But Scott Parker tried it every time he played for us that season, mm. trying to keep us up. Um, and, the, and the season before, the, the goal against Wigan, but yep. the season we went down, he was any one footballer writers of the year. Yeah, he and did. He, he was just... I wonder when the last time that was as well, when the person, you know, one of the relegated teams. Yeah. You know, very, very rare. And the thing is though, Russ, I know West Ham fans hate him. Well, I don't say hate him. They don't like what he did, but Mm. me and you know a story behind why Parks went to Tottenham, you know, and then in the the day, he's going to say about it. But if, if that was your only option, and we needed money because the, with that money, we wouldn't have signed the players like David Bentley, no. 
uh, Issa Diop, Sam Baldock, um, John Carew, that paid for all of that to yeah, get is. us back up that year. So yeah. um, without Scott Parker's, I think, what was it, five, six million he went to Spurs? Yeah, it was something yeah, like that. yeah five, yeah. six. But that was huge for us. Um, yeah, and it made don't a get me difference. wrong, that would have that would have been phenomenal uh, to keep Scott Parker with Kevin Nolan and Nobes in the middle that season. Cool. But we got we got up, yeah. Um, but it was just unfortunate that the first time he came back, he got booed. But then he got cheered when he came back for Nobes testimonial. So. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. it's just yeah. different times, you know. People, as you said, when they when, when someone wears a different shirt, they're they're you know. But when someone comes back as a, you know, I don't know. Martin in, or Chris interviews them at half time, then it's a totally different um, yeah. perception of them. I remember uh, Tony Carr's testimonial, Russ, when mm. uh, John Terry got a cheer from the West Ham fans. He was in a West Ham kit. Exactly. <laughs> and Lampard and Defoe and, and exactly. stuff like that. So they all got a cheer. All right. So we've got Scotty P. Who's the other two in centres then? So I'm going to go a bit attacking. Don't get me wrong. If we was playing this, we would get absolutely destroyed on the attack. But um, I'm going to go with someone that I grew up with watching, going to youth team. And, and as I said, I was lucky enough to be friends with Bertie, who was in the same team as him. And I watched, because because of Bertie, yeah. I used to go to the garden and it's Joe Carl. Joe Carl was just something else for West Ham. Um, at the age of 14, he had too much on his shoulders. Yes. If you, it, it, you know, it, it, it's the equivalent of now of someone like Neymar, the higher profile mm. of a of a child, but English wise, you know, Joe Joe grew up as being classed as the next uh, Paul Gascoigne, yeah. um, and it, it was a bit much for him. And like what I said to you before, he went to Chelsea. All he played was in central midfield. Yeah, but for me, and I've argued with it with him with this. Um, I still think his best season he's had as a footballer was the season he was our captain. Again, someone who put that armband on and tried to drive us and drive us. Unfortunately, mm. he was too young at the time. He was 21, but um, he drove us that season and he nearly did it. He nearly yeah. did it with, um, but he, and then coming back, um, he, he come back because of, uh, he just wanted to come back and play yeah. for West Ham again. Yeah. Uh, he, he loved West Ham. He's a West Ham boy, um, you know, and, he loves West Ham so much yeah. and all his family to West Ham. And, and uh, I was lucky enough, I um, there was a game, I think last season or season before, there was a 20-year uh, a anniversary of the 99 Youth Cup. Yes. And Cole yeah. at, at the training ground. Um, and uh, it was just nice to see them all again. And um, mm. Bertie had his boy playing with him on the same team. Oh, nice. And jo- jo- Joey was there as well. And uh, it's, it's, it just they just love it. You know, yeah. and so it was unreal. But um, okay, so we got Scott, yeah. we got Joe. Who's your third? Who's your trio in that midfield? So this goes back to the YouTube videos, right? Yeah. Now it's a toss up, and it is a big toss up, right? Um, so it's between Al Berkovich mm. or Frank Lampard Jr. Now, as I said, going back watching them videos, I didn't realise how important them two was for us yeah. so frank went on to have probably the best career that he could ever have i would probably put him in front of rio and joe as in career wise yeah no i agree. A much better uh, as a much yeah, better yeah. Pl- a, a much better player um but what west Ham fans i know we hate him and a, a lot of things went on that season you know yeah i think i think as well russ if i was frank and my best friend just got sold to Leeds. My uncle and dad just got the boot for something that shouldn't really should have been sacked for personally. You know, I would be a bit peed. Yeah, and, sure. Um, but he's a West Ham boy. Mm. He, uh, you know, he grew up with. He's a West Ham. He, you know, his old man. He's he's a West Ham boy. Unfortunately, we just didn't keep him. No. And that, and you know, and uh, do do we think that he would have had the career what he had at Chelsea for West Ham? Maybe, maybe, but that would have depended on who else he had around him, around as well, it, yeah. you know. So, but I'm going to go with Isle Berkovich. Yeah, Isle Berkovich was this. He was just he's he's he. If you could say 
who he is now of any player in the Premier League, he's mm. he's David Silva. Yeah, good but shout. For us. So he he was just a like watching it back over the years. Um how we used to find Paul Kitson. Paul Kitson used to mm. and Ian Wright. And this is what uh, I said on Twitter the other day, like Berkovich fitted with all these players like Hearts and Kitson, um Wright, Defoe, and he still fitted in that team. Yeah. And, and and he still found a way to play little man, little big man up front and just play off the striker. And, but Berkovic, again, another one that had his head turns, went to Celtic, didn't really do much after that. Mm. Uh, someone else that we could have built something. But I always remember what Harry said is, if we didn't sell Berkovic, Joe Carl wouldn't have fitted into the, yeah. so. It swings its roundabouts. Swings about. roundabouts, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And as you said, yeah, I, I think, you know, looking back through Robert's um, season reviews uh, channel, I mean, it, 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 I forget, same as you, probably how many assists he had. I don't think Hudson oh, yeah. and Kitson would have scored half as many goals as they no, did if it no. wasn't for the little flick throughs and stuff. And we need yeah. those type of players at West Ham. Um, right. Okay. But so you, could, a, you could argue the point, going back to that, that him or Yossi Benoyou. Yeah. And I do think, I do think, Berkovich just nicked him on that. I think Benny Hume scored the better goals, but I think Yossi, as a, a more overall playmaker, was yeah, yeah, a lot. No, I agree. Yeah. So who yeah. we, so who we got banging these goals in for you then? You know, who's well, your two strikers? So I'm going to go with the most obvious striker of all. I grew up with him. Um, <laughs> um, um, I've met this guy, and he's he's my hero. Yep. I've got two. I've got two of these uh, match worn shirts that, after the uh, Mark Noble testimonial, um, I stood on the. I shouldn't have done it. I stood on the pitch side and waited and waited and waited to get them signed. And his only one is Tucanio. He he just he was unreal. And I'm lucky enough to have two of his shirts. I've got his shirt against Bradford away, the blue sh- uh, shirt. And I've got these uh, guy. I can't think he was against Middlesbrough. His home shirt, and I've got them both signed to me. Um, prize, prize things that I would never let go. Yeah. But he, I just grew up with him. He was what Cantona was to United. He yeah. was what um, Rooney was to United. He he was our all of them. The only thing, the only thing that I'll say about Pilo, um, and I think well, a lot of West Ham fans would agree on this. If he did it more for away from away game, yeah, yeah, because yeah. there there was games that I've been travelling to Middlesbrough and Newcastle's and Pilo never even had a kick. You wouldn't mm. even know he was on the pitch, but then he'd come back to Upton Park and he'd be head and shoulders above, above everyone, um, you know. And he's the only player growing up that I knew that had a song that the whole stadium sang, mm. and it made such such a big noise. And then after that, Pyatt. But yeah. Paolo, Paolo, again, watching back then videos, like he made a, um, he's just done a Premier League thing on uh, on Sky Sports. Mm. And I didn't know this, but he, when we got relegated, he asked to stay um, and he, he wanted to sign a contract. So uh, he earned £10 a month just to stay at West Ham. But we wanted, uh, we wanted him out and rode him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Rhoda stayed on and Parlo went to Charlton, but um, yeah, Parlo was just something else. And yeah. you know that that game against Chelsea, that last that last goal we ever scored, us. Um, I don't I don't think he was there. Was you there at the time? I think General uh, Nick Nichols was. Um, I was, I was doing, when, yeah, I was doing. Yeah, I was with Jim. Yeah, yeah, and I always remember him shouting like. His name and the whole, the whole yeah. thing erupting. Yeah, no, and, um, and and you know all of his little YouTube videos he's doing at the moment. You know, and he's and like he was doing that keepy up. He wasn't he singing yeah. to bubbles, and he yeah. was wearing a, like a fifties shirt. So it wasn't even like a shirt that he yeah. had. It's one that he's bought. You know, yeah. so you know, little things like that. And yeah, exactly. Far too short for him. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, he, he was a, he was a lovely guy. Okay, so we got PDC. Who who we got partnering PDC up from? Right, so. It's a toss-up. I used to love, growing up, this is the one player that I loved from another club. Mm. He's not He's not going to make it, but I'm just, just going to give it. It was Ian Wright. I used to yeah. love Ian Wright. Ian Wright. And when he comes to West Ham, I've never had a player that I was so excited to see at West Ham. He, he was, you know, and 4-4-2, Hartson, Wright, 
you know, it would have worked. But Kitson as well was unreal back then. And mm. I, uh, to be fair, Russ, I, don't, I think you would agree on that. I don't think we've had a striker like that since. We haven't had to a combination. We, we haven't had a combination set. You know what I mean? It's like you, you know. I think Chicharito could have been that player if he was played in the yeah. right formations. And yeah. you know, but I don't think we've had like the Hearts and Kits and combo for a long time. I mean Ashton. I mean to me, Ashton. Yeah, Dean, you know, D- yeah, Dean Ashton. And I, and I think if they would have stayed fit, I think Ashton and Bellamy would have been up there with yeah, uh, Cotties and Cotties and McAvennies and yeah. Kits and Hartsons. But the striker I'm going for, and he's the only one who has scored the most goals in the Premier League for us in one season, is Johnny Arson. Yeah. I, um, be, being a, uh, a ginger myself, I use I he was I used to have him on the back of my shirt. Um, again, he was the only one who scored. He scored 24 goals, and he's no one else has come close to that, close to it, yeah. that season. Um, and he had. Uh, I think it was two or three suspensions in that season as well. I think the last game he lo- he uh, missed the last four games of the season because he um, punched Iger Stimac in the face and um, and stuff like that. But John Artson <laughs> just. But the weird thing about it, though, Russ, is that John Artson was so good for us, and, and for a big man to like without Berkovic, I don't think he would have got the goals. No, exactly. But but. He was always there on the end of it, like Kevin Nolan always knew where to mm. stand. Timing, um, and, stuff, yeah. and and John Artson, it was just, and and as weird as it is, if we didn't sell John Artson, who took his number ten shirt after Parlo? Mm. So if we didn't sell Johnny Artson, we wouldn't have got to Ganio. Is that so? Yeah, it's again one of those weird. <laughs> it's you know. one of them, um, but then. You know, when Wimbledon come along and offered like eight million for us, silly money. For John, time, for the, it? it was, and, and he didn't really do much at Wimbledon, and he went on the no. country and and then to Celtic. But then I think if you asked any fan, John Arson is known for his Celtic and West Ham days. Um, yeah. You know, and and again, Harry got the best out of him. He knew how to play him. But with with Arson, you could not play with a striker and just play Berkovic off him. And play and yeah, and hold off, off him. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know. Uh, Joe Cole was just coming through at the time, and um, yeah. But nice. I've missed I've missed so many players out. There's players like of course Michael, you have. Ka- Michael of course you have. Carrick, um, and that's yeah. and that's the idea. The idea is you yeah. know, and and it, and then you know, having it, it gives you that nostalgic view going back. And as I said with the again with Robert's uh, Robert's yeah. YouTube channel, you know, going back and looking at it, re- you reassess how you thought about. Um, it. Hundred um, percent with rose tinted glasses and stuff. So, anyway, so going over Leon's team again, we've got Ludo in goal, and then we've got a back three of Rio, Slav, and Julian, and then we've got a five of Pyatt, left wing back, uh, Berkovic, Joe, Scotty P, and Trevor on the right, and we've got PDC and Hartson up front. I think that yes. could do a job. That could definitely it's, do a job. Yeah, I think entertaining. I think, it will be yeah. first on match of the day every week because we either won eight yeah. nil or lost eight nil. Um, yeah, but definitely entertaining, Leon. I think Scott Park's got to cover all the wing backs. Ground to cover, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, attacking wise, yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, Jurgen Klopp's formation. It just go forwards. Or... Love it, love it. Anyway, but, yeah, thanks, really, thanks so much, Leon. It's been great. That's great all right, mate. Here. Be good to catch up. Um, yeah, and as I said, you know, if, if um, you know, ping those uh, those pictures over, and I'll, I'll make sure we we put them up when we talk about them and stuff like that. And uh, it's been great chatting. Anyway, thanks everyone yeah. for listening. Cheers, Rob. thanks everyone's watching. Um, you know, please, you know, like, share, comment, whatever you want to do. And uh, we'll be back with another hammer um, soon, hopefully. Um, thank you very much. Cheers, guys. <laughs>